Okay, by the way, that was fantastic talk. I really enjoyed uh, uh, talk. So, uh, I'm Min-Soo Kim. Uh, uh, this is actually a really great honor to, to, to have this opportunity to uh, uh, you know, talk in front of you. Uh, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to mainly talk about uh, you know, cancer immunotherapy, uh, kind of current status, and, and some of the research that we're actually doing in our lab to improve the, uh, the efficacies and safety of this uh, uh, therapy. So I have a little uh, sort of uh, catch uh, title uh, today, but you know I, I don't really think I need like any additional uh, introduction of this really exciting new therapeutic approach called uh, cancer immunotherapy. And uh, you know, really daily and, and every week or every month, we have really promising and positive outcomes, both from uh, you know scientific clinical trials and also from real patient uh, study. So this is why you know this cancer immunotherapy has been really exciting topics in many scientific journals and public broadcasts, and we have you know we have many uh, uh, you know the fantastic uh, uh, study. And, you know one of the uh, uh, the, the great story is the, the former uh, president uh, Jimmy Carter. Uh, he treated with uh, one of the uh, the, the uh, cancer immunotherapy PD1 therapy and uh, had really uh, uh, great outcomes. So the concept. Concept of cancer immunotherapy is really, you know, very straightforward. Uh, you know, as a human, uh, you know, healthy human being, you know, once we, in a, in a while we have like transformed cells and malignant cells in our body. The reason why we don't really get cancer very easily, you know, our immune system works so hard to recognize those transformed cells and directly attacks and get rid of and uh, to protect our body from the, uh, the the cancer. So the concept of cancer immunotherapy is just you know try to use this very strong our own immune system to fight against uh, our cancer. And as you may know, there's so many different ways we can actually use our uh, immu own immune system to, to, to treat cancer or fight uh, against cancer. And, but the, the kind of recent kind of uh, clinical approach mainly divide into three uh, categories uh, uh, in, in current uh, uh, immunotherapy. One of the most uh, uh, well-established currently the, the immunotherapy is called a uh, checkpoint inhibitor therapy, and I, I'm sure many of you already heard uh, 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 recently that the concept of uh, uh, checkpoint inhibitor is actually uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, kind of interesting. So if we have infection, for example, or cancer, our immune cell, like T cell for, uh, in this case, has to get really uh, activated by the, this antigen. And once they get activations, this in the mostly in the lymph node, they have to come back to the blood and go directly to the, their target tissue, like infection site or, or uh, the place of the cancer. And this T cell will, you know, direct contact with these target cells and try to kill those, uh, you know, target cells by releasing many toxic molecules. So this is a very strong, positive immune response, right, to, to fight against the cancer or pathogen. But the, the but the great thing about our immune system is it's very well controlled. Whenever we have very strong positive response, we have to have this negative uh, feedback to have really defined balance in our uh, uh, immune system. Because otherwise, I mean, you need positive immune response to treat uh, infection. But at the same time, you know, you don't want to have overactivated immune system because otherwise it will go to the, like, you know, very severe inflammations or autoimmune uh, uh, disease. So this balance is actually quite important. The one of the, those very well known negative uh, balance for immune uh, response is called a checkpoint receptor. So whenever our immune system get activated, they also express this negative receptor to calm down uh, uh, immune system. So one of the very well known this inhibitory receptor is called CTLA4 and PD1 uh, receptor. So the tumor is actually quite smart, and you know for their own survival, they actually utilize this negative uh, uh, immune uh, receptor. So whenever we have tumor, they express very high level of this uh, inhibitory receptor targets, so really try to calm down host immune response for their own survival. So this is actually uh, the, the system. So the theory was, if you actually inhibit this inhibitory receptor, then you actually promote your positive immune response to kill the tumor cell. So that's the concept uh, in this uh, checkpoint inhibitor. And in, in therapy, this works beautifully, actually, um, in, in many cases. And this is why we got this Nobel Prize this year. 
Uh, Dr. Jim Allison, uh, working at uh, MD Anderson right now, he actually developed, uh, uh, discovered this CTF uh, A4 receptor and also developed the blockers and blocking antibody against this CTLA4. And Dr. Honzo in Japan, he actually discovered this another inhibitory receptor called PD-1, and he also developed blocking antibody against PD-1. Uh, um, and for that, um, uh, this year's Nobel Prize actually awarded to these two uh, scientists. Currently, FDA approves several of you uh, of this drug. Uh, both in single therapy and also the combinational therapy. And um, this, actually, this table I show you, so the blue dot is actually the, uh, the time of their first clinical trial of each drug. And then red dot is the time when uh, FDA finally approved this drug for the, uh, uh, the, uh, the cancer patient. And you can see, you know, from first clinical trials and FDA approval is about, it takes about 10 years. And if you, also, imagine to discovery of this, you know, each single molecule easily take, you know, 10 to 20 years. And for total years, it took mostly like more than 20 years or sometimes 30 years until you actually finally uh, FDA approve uh, 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 as a drug. But, but this is really exciting times, and, and there's actually uh, a lot more uh, drug coming up uh, 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 in, the, in the clinic uh, for the better uh, uh, efficacy. So that's a checkpoint inhibitor. And another uh, second uh, way to use our own immune system to can uh, treat the cancer is cancer vaccine. The, actually, the history of cancer vaccine is a lot, uh, you know, older than any other this immunotherapy. But the uh, but the progress was a little disappointing. Uh, uh, one of the paper published in Nature Medicine uh, uh, 2004 highlight that uh, one of the you know, first clinical trial. Among 440 patients, they tried this cancer vaccine, only the responding rate was, you know, 2.6%, and, and the number was, you know, quite disappointing. But one thing I'd like to highlight uh, uh, here was this was the 2004 story. And right now, as you know, the technology developed just, you know, really dramatically recently, both in, you know, the biotechnology and biomedical uh, research. So now what we can do is we can actually collect it the cancer sample very quickly and recognize their uh, uh, background. And we can do like whole genomic sequence within a couple of days or week. So which means we can actually quickly discover any kind of mutations that can discover in, in the specific uh, uh, cancer in specific patient. And then using this information, we can actually use computational uh, you know, algorithm to detect and new antigens and possible cancer antigen from that, uh, the, the cancer samples. And throughout, uh, you know, uh, again, very uh, 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 fast uh, uh, track uh, 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 biotechnology, we can actually develop highly personalized cancer vaccine against these discovered uh, antigens for the, uh, the, the specific type of cancers and to the specific type of patient. So hopefully, you know, this process actually can develop much better cancer vaccine uh, soon, and, and this is, again, uh, it's gonna be a really exciting field in, in near future. Third, uh, really uh, the important way to use our immune system to, to, to treat cancer is called adoptive cell transfer therapy or CAR or T cell therapy. And again, the concept is actually really uh, straightforward. We can um, isolate uh, uh, like tumor infiltrating immune cells like T cells from the patient tumor. And obviously, many of these immune cells has a potential to recognize tumor and kill a tumor. So once we isolate this uh, potentially tumor recognizing immune cells, and then you can actually really activate and expand their number in the lab. And once you got like millions or billions of these immune cells, and then now you can infuse this cell back into the patient body and hoping that you know, these immune cells will circulate uh, throughout the blood and eventually will find tumor and, and kill uh, uh, those tumors. And also the outcome is actually really exciting from this uh, approach. And another way you can improve this technology is called uh, CAR T cell therapy. So when you activate your, or grow your T cells in the lab, you can actually use even genetic modification to these cells so that this T cell now have this completely artificial receptor, like genetically modified receptor called chimeric antigen receptor to recognize target cancer better 
and kill uh, that cancer better. So this is just complete genetic engineering. And in, in most cases, this receptor, like artificial receptor, has a, a, a domain which can directly recognize a cancer antigen. And in the cell, it can really activate T cell, so the T cells can kill tumor cell better. So this is called a, a, a chimeric antigen receptor. So you can actually introduce this genetic modification to your T cell and, be, and then transfer back into the patient body. And this T cell will do much better their job uh, uh, and, and by killing uh, their target uh, cancer. Just to give you one example about this CAR T cell therapy, this is one of the, uh, the experiments we did uh, in our lab. Uh, um, you know, kind of simple. Um, I mean, it's not. I mean, it took years to to set up this experiment. But uh, what you can see here is uh, we have this cancer cell uh, uh, in the plate, which is uh, labeled by green color, and then you can see like there's small T cells around. So in this stage, T cell have no way to recognize this cancer uh, because you know there's no receptor to or, or, uh, in, in the T cell surface. So if you just put them together, you know, sometimes T cells uh, come to the tumor cells and touch a little bit, and it obviously doesn't do anything and because there's no way uh, for them to recognize this uh, cancer cell. But then, if you have cancer cells, and, but in this case, by the way, this cancer cell express a, one of the very well-known tumor antigens, poor or HER2 antigen, and now these T cells actually express CAR receptor that recognize this HER2 antigen. And this study suddenly became just completely different uh, uh, pattern. And now these T cells really aggressively try to attack cancer cells. And within minute of this attack, many of these cancer cells will start to die. And you can see uh, uh, they change color in, in, in red that uh, represent uh, death. So if you actually compare these conditions and these conditions, and there's almost no killing in tumor cell killing in these uh, conditions. And here, this is near 100% killing in, in tumor uh, cells. So this is really dramatic, uh, you know, very strong uh, uh, modification uh, to, to help T cell to, to, to kill a target cancer. And this is why last year, uh, FDA approved this two CAR T cell therapy mainly against uh, a B-cell lymphoma. Uh, and, um, and although the, you know, the, the single um, uh, cost of this therapy is really expensive, but, but in, in many of our hematologic uh, cancer clinical trials, the, the average responding rate is like 70%. And this is just an you know, incredible number. And I, I still remember one of the small clinical trials, must be in, in a, a one of the, uh, in the Europe country, and they even have 90% responding rate uh, of this therapy. This is really uh, uh, exciting uh, uh, approach. But the problem with this approach is it works beautifully in like, you know, lymphoma and leukemia, but, but it doesn't really work in solid tumor, like the breast cancer, brain tumor, and some other melanoma type of uh, cancer. So why this CAR T cell doesn't work, work which works beautifully in, 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 in hematoma, uh, uh, like lymphoma and leukemia, doesn't really work in solid tumor. So there's a few reasons uh, for that. Um, so the first reason is the T cells cannot find this tumor very easily in the body because, as I mentioned, tumor is so smart, they're really hiding themselves in somewhere in our body so that they really kind of prevent immune attack for their own survival. So even though you sometimes infuse like you know, billions of cells or 10 billion of cells into the patient body, the number of T cells that get to the tumor site is really, really small, like much less than 1% or 0.1% of T cells can eventually get to the tumor site. So to make billion or like 10 billion T cells in the lab, that's, this is a really expensive procedure. And this is why actually uh, the cost of this therapy is really high. And at the same time, you know, this is highly activated and genetically modified uh, uh, 10 billion uh, uh, T cells in, in the patient body. So the, 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 the risk of side effect is really high. The second problem is, even though you're lucky and small number of T cells can get to the tumor site, usually these solid tumors make their own environment, which is highly immunosuppressive. So even though T cells can find tumor, 
come to the tumor area, they just cannot overcome these immune suppressions and so that they cannot really kill the target tumor uh, easily. The third problem is, of course, is the side effects. So imagine if you, you know, test new drug to the patient, if patient develops side effects, the first thing you can do is, you know, stop giving drug, right? But this is the infusion of 10 billion of highly activated immune cells, even genetically modified immune cells to the patient body. And if something goes wrong, there's not much thing you can go, uh, you know, do uh, uh, in, in the patient. So what we do uh, uh, in our lab is to actually, we really work hard to develop these CAR T cells so that they can actually work also very well in many solid tumor. Uh, uh, uh. So this is why, uh, you know, how we try to build better CAR T cell therapy uh, uh, in the lab. So when we designed this therapy, we had few things in our mind. We really want to build highly safe, non-invasive, and highly focused so that we can only change the T cell at the tumor site without touching any other organs, and highly flexible uh, you know, uh, uh, therapy, which can be applied in many different types of uh, solid tumor. So only technology which can satisfy all this requirement in our mind was the light. As you can see, light can penetrate uh, without any surgery. You can turn on or off light within milliseconds, and sometimes you can shine light only small area or single cell sometime to, to, uh, to, to, to deliver uh, the light activation. So how we can use light to first help T cell to find cancer uh, target cell? For that reason, we became interested in molecule chorodopsin which is express an eye, and obviously it activates by the light and it generates optical stimulation in the cells which can send signal to the brain uh, uh, to, to, for the, uh, the visual activity. And actually, the molecule that mediate immune cell migration, which is called chemokine receptor, the rhodopsin and chemokine receptor uh, molecule structure is very similar. So we decide to use this kind of structural similarity by genetic modifications to combine these two molecules as a one molecule to generate a molecule called a photoactivatable chemokine receptor. So the half of this receptor originate from the rhodopsin receptor. The other half of this receptor originate from the, uh, the chemokine receptor. Once you combine this, in theory, you can activate this molecule with the light, but instead of optical stimulation, it will generate cell migration signal in the cell. So in, in other words, you can actually guide migration of immune cells just simply activating that cells with the light. So once we develop these molecules, we obviously test this in a, a T cell, and without any signal, just simply shining light, now you can actually guide these T cell migrations. Sometimes you can put light at the tail so that they can stop at certain location. Again, there's no additional stimulation in this case. Or if, if your immune cell going into the wrong direction, you can shine light at the tail of these immune cells. And by doing so, you can actually guide your immune cell migration toward the, uh, the different directions uh, or will reverse their direction. Sometimes you can shine light at a uh, certain area. Again, only T cell that has this molecule will see the light and come directly to the light and then stay. Sometimes you can actually shine a little broad area so again, only T cell that has this receptor will come directly to the light and then they stay. So the question is how we can apply this technology to eventually uh, patients. Um, you know, obviously we cannot go directly to the patient. Obviously we have to collect a lot more data from small and large animal uh, preclinical uh, trial. So, so this is how we do uh, uh, test this concept in, in a mouse model in this case. So in this study, the mouse has a melanoma in one of the skin of, of the ear. And then uh, we isolate T cells from this mouse. And then in the lab, we genetically modify their T cells so that they express this light sensing molecule and transfer back into the mouse body. And we attach LED on a, right on the surface of the melanoma, hoping that we can shining light at the tumor area recruit more T cell at the tumor area. So by doing so, we can actually reduce the tumor growth and kill more tumor. And this is how we do it for daily experiments. 
So mouse carry this battery power to the DVD. Catch right on the antenna. You know, this is, you know, uh, mouse can even age for like a couple of weeks and months carrying this LED. And whenever we, to make long story short, uh, whenever we shine light, we really dramatically uh, uh, reduce tumor growth and almost eradic uh, to remove the tumors from many of our uh, mouse models. So uh, uh, we're very excited about uh, these outcomes. Just like we use light, we can also help T cell overcome these immune suppression uh, so that they can kill their target cell uh, better. Just very briefly, to, to when T cells, in this case, kill their target uh, tumor cell, they really need calcium ion in their body because calcium ion is so important for T cell function so that they can release toxic molecule to kill a, a target tumor. So we developed in the lab that we can boost this calcium uh, signal only in T cell with the light uh, stimulation so that we can help T cell to overcome immune suppression and boost their immune response to kill their target uh, better. To do that, we actually borrow molecule from green algae. So the green algae has a molecule called channel rhodopsin, which is light-sensitive calcium channels. So we got this DNA from green algae and again genetically modified these uh, molecules and, and transpect into the uh, T cells. And whenever, obviously, you know, if you don't have this receptor, cell really doesn't, you know, respond to light. But if you express these ion channels into the cells, just simply shining light, you can dramatically boost their calcium uh, signal. So we I also proved that we can actually really boost uh, our immune response by using these molecules. In terms of side effects, how we can control side effects uh, with the light, we are developing an on switch and off switch of T cell function with the light. Uh, again, uh, very briefly, this CAR T cell receptor used this molecule and we actually redesigned these CAR T cell molecules and divide into two parts. And these two divided CAR T cell receptors never functional unless you shine light. So in a sense, you now actually can give license to T cell to kill their target tumors. Unless you shine light, even though T cells can recognize tumor, they cannot really initiate their uh, uh, toxic effects. Off switch, we're actually developing a kind of cell suicide mechanism so if something goes wrong and T cells overactivated, then we can again shine light to induce their own suicide mechanism so that they can kill themselves to get rid of uh, their own uh, cells. Before I finish, the, you know, the, one of the kind of important concepts here is all these mechanisms can be controlled by simply shining light with different color. So for example, you can shine light uh, with the one color of uh, uh, light activation so that you can recruit this T cell to the tumor site. Once they arrive at the tumor site, you can turn on second light to boost their own immune response so that they can kill their tumor better. And then once they complete their job, now you can turn on third light to induce their suicide and they, they can kill themselves to get rid of their uh, cells from the, the, the patient body. Again, this con can be controlled by just simply using remote con. Um, remote control to change color of light and, and, and hoping that we can actually uh, apply this technology uh, in the clinic uh, uh, in the future. Before I finish, I just want to highlight that you know, you know, Rochester is actually a great place to do this kind of uh, research. I mean, we, we feel very lucky. And as you know, the optic uh, science in Rochester is one of the top in the world. And then cancer uh, research in Rochester is a really active uh, area. And then immunology is actually historically is very strong in Rochester. So our research, in a sense, this is a combination of three different types of science, optic and cancer research and uh, immunology. So we really uh, uh, feel excited uh, uh, to be here and hoping that we have a lot more progress in the future for the uh, real uh, therapeutic uh, application. Thank you very much. Oh, Dr. Kim, uh, thank you for this presentation. That's remarkable research, and I, I can see it being incredibly hopeful to people with uh, various tumors in the future. Mm -hmm. My concern is the cost of it. How are we going to be able to afford this kind of treatment 
as a, as a as a nation as a healthcare delivery system. I just yeah. So uh, I mean, that's that's always challenge as a like basic scientist. You know, you know, everything works beautifully in the lab, and how we can actually move toward more patients and clinics. And in terms of our technology, uh, current CAR T cell therapy actually use genetic modification anyway. So adding one or two more gene in already existing therapy to deliver our molecules into patient T-cell is not going to be a lot of work, so we're actually positive for that. And also the, in the clinic, uh, especially uh, dermatology, the support therapy is already exists, so they use LED to like psoriasis and some other uh, type of disease. So there is hardware for that too. Um, I, I think we just have to try, and, and we, we think that using light to manipulate T-cell function is actually it's going to be quite safe. We not inject drug, we not inject any other additional molecule to patient body. We're just simply shining light. So, and I mean, we're really hopeful to, to move on to the clinics. So, yeah, thanks. That was a great talk, Dr. Thank Kim. Um, so much of the solid tumors are hidden in certainly with their metastatic. And right. how, is there a way that you can see how you would get light yeah. to these hidden places? So, so metastatic cancer is going to be really great challenging for our applications. But one of the, uh, the, our recent publications um, um, last year uh, uh, in, in that study, we, again, this is mouse model uh, still. So we had uh, two tumor mouse models. So the mouse has a melanoma in ear and the other melanoma at the flank area. And we did this uh, experiments. We shine light only at the ear and we st suddenly start to see the shrink of tumor at the flank area. So the, for some reason, the boost of immune response at the primary tumors actually somehow generates systemic immune response. And maybe this activated T cell leave this primary tumors and spread throughout the tumors and do some job there other. So the, hopefully met metastatic can be also the great uh, uh, target for our future uh, research too. Yeah. Yeah, just a quick technical question. Your um, light frequencies are highly absorbed yeah. in normal tissue. Yeah. Can you get around that? Yeah, so that's, that's one of the, the biggest technical challenges we have. I didn't show you uh, the slide at the end, but this is actually kind of uh, uh, sort of uh, interesting. So with the collaboration, uh, people in uh, Stanford, we developed this implantable LED. So this small LED received radio signal, just like your cell phone just completely wireless. So you can actually implant this LED into the body. I'm, I'm not sure whether you can see. So you can actually implant this wireless LED, with, receive radio signals, and shine light. And also we are uh, uh, developing a uh, kind of acupuncture type of LED. So this small LED, you can actually, just, just like acupuncture, uh, you can actually put it in the, uh, the patient body and sh to shine light at the deep uh, area. So, yeah. So that's obviously that's a techni technical, uh, you know, the challenge for us too. Yeah. Since uh, penetration to the uh, uh, actual site of the tumor cells is a, such a problem, yeah. does tumor density itself play a role, and is there variations? Are there variations in tumor densities that have, yeah. you know, an effect? Yeah, you know, this is you know light, uh, you know. Obviously, uh, physics, you know, diffractions, penetration, absorption is going to be all matters. And I think every different tumor will behave differently uh, in, in physics. So, the, you know, the melanoma, which will absorb many, uh, you know, light wavelengths, uh, might have even more uh, challenging. So, uh, I mean, like I said, uh, this is kind of engineering problem for us. And we really have to collaborate with uh, uh, the people in engineers to actually, you know, develop this hardware uh, uh, as well. So we haven't really gone that far yet, so. Um, we know that all new therapies have liabilities and that, I'm We're, over here, and that, um, uh, you know, they're gonna be bumps oh, okay. in the road, but last week, okay. you know, there was a report out of UPenn that in, the CAR -T, in a CAR-T mm -hmm. patient, uh, in the process of transforming the T cells, mm -hmm. uh, leukemia cells also were transformed and that patient died. 
So can you talk a little bit about what hap has to happen uh, in terms of, is it an engineering problem, process problem at the end of the day, or is there something else going on that we don't fully understand at this point? So um, in terms of uh, you know, engineering process, um, this is genetic modifications. And you know, one of the kind of biggest problem, at least for me, they use uh, HIV virus to deliver gene to the T cells. Um, I mean, obviously this is safe, a version of HIV, it's, it's, it's not uh, pathologic anymore, but you know you have to use virus to deliver gene to your cells, and um, there are always biosafety issues. And then uh, the gene delivery efficiency is very uh, relatively low, so we really have to boost uh, gene delivery efficiency, and, and also culturing billions of cells in the lab is just so expensive procedure. So. I think there's a lot of things has to be done, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, kind of more streamline these productions and gene delivery. But, you know, each different step has its, you know, its own barrier. So I think it may take some, you know, years uh, on to, uh, to reach that point. Dr. Kim, yeah. could you clarify as to whether or not the effectiveness of this very novel approach mm -hmm. is dependent or independent of the genetic co composition of the tumor cells? That's, that's an extremely difficult question for me. Uh, you know, as an immunologist, my understanding about cancer cell is like each cancer is different disease. And obviously, you know, each different cancer has completely different genetic backgrounds and modifications. Um, but you know the, the strengths of immune response is you know you know highly you know flexible. So you know the using immune system is actually is going to be uh, it might have better flexibility than the conventional therapy like the chemotherapies or radiotherapies. And the, the great thing about just genetic modification, depending on you know the patient conditions and patient cancer type, we can easily and quickly uh, adapt this uh, approach. So there's. I think there's a high level of flexibility, um, but you know, that's a really difficult question. I don't think I can really answer uh, to that question now. So, so yeah. Thank you very much. Well, thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.